Blessed, most merciful Heavenly Father, I come before you humbly, Lord, and I beg and I plead, Lord, that you give me the courage, the will, the words, and the wisdom to speak that you've given me to speak. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I am just the dust of the earth, and no one is beneath me. And the only thing special about me is that I am God's dirt. And I am forgiven. I uh, want to show you a picture that I took of my friend Mike Potter. We lived in Michigan at the time. And this picture was taken at Niagara Falls, Canada in 1971. And this is not a doctored photo. I actually took this photo of my friend Mike. And he, uh, he told me to walk down the sidewalk a ways and uh, to snap his photo. And I thought he was just going to go and stand at the edge, but I was shocked when he actually sat down on the edge and swung his feet over the edge of the cliff for me to take his picture. Look close at this photo. What you're looking at is actually a photo of you. If you are living in sin in the world, that is you sitting on the edge of the cliff, hanging your feet over the edge of the abyss. You, know, you may not know it, you may not even realize it, but that is you sitting on the edge, dangling your feet into oblivion. At that time, that was also me, but I had no idea. My friend asked me to, if I wanted him to snap my photo sitting on the edge of the cliff with my feet hanging over the edge. I said, no, thank you. I value my life a little bit more than that. What I did not realize was that I was already sitting on the edge and dangling my, fit, my feet into the pit already. One little mis misstep, one little slip, a little collapse of the ground underneath me, and down I would go, literally down straight into hell. Now you might call me a coward for not taking up the challenge, but I do not like to tempt fate. But little did I know that I was already sitting on the edge of that cliff with my feet dangling, dangling over the edge already. But I didn't even know it. And many of you probably don't know it either. But if you are in sin and not forgiven and not washed in the blood of Jesus, then yes, you are sitting on the edge of that cliff with your feet dangling over the edge. I say this with all love and all humility, but our time here grows short, ever so short. Soon the rapture will come, and the faithful in Jesus Christ, he will catch us away from the sin-filled and, and vile and wicked world. And if you are left behind, then you will endure all the horrors of the tribulation, where two and a half billion people will die and that is only in the first half of the tribulation and much worse is to come in the second half now that is not me saying this this is the bible that says this and the bible has never been wrong and any of its prophecies has all have come to pass exactly as predicted except for about 300 prophecies that are left what are the odds that the remaining 300 will not be fulfilled when over 2,000 prophecies have been fulfilled, literally. So when the Bible tells you that a multitude of demons will be released upon the earth in the last days, you can believe it. It also says Nephilim will walk the earth again. And it also says fallen angels will walk the earth for their season of destruction also. Revelation 9 and 15. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. Or to slay the third part of men. Another prophecy to come true, and these fallen angels will kill one third of mankind. I know because I have seen it. I've had several dreams of fallen angels destroying everything before them, and no weapon could harm them. And they destroyed night and day without ceasing or stopping to rest, and they destroyed everything in their path because they were filled with much rage against God, but they could not touch God. So they took their anger out on what God loved, us. 
I saw many horrors in the tribulation. I saw horrors that I really cannot even talk about here. This is what Jesus says about the tribulation. Matthew 24 and 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. I started back in 2015 saying that America was entering judgment and was entering the time of sorrows. Do they believe me now? If not, then believe this. These birth pains will continue and get stronger and stronger and our calamities will come faster and faster. What this means is that our problems will continue and get worse and worse. And it will seem as if one major calamity, calamity will be on top of another. But before all this gets past a point, God will say it's time. And then Jesus will return for his bride, his faithful to catch us away from the tribulation that is soon to come after the rapture. If you are not saved, if you find yourself sitting on that cliff with your feet dangling over the side, there is only one who can save you, and his name is Jesus Christ. Humble yourself before him, pray and repent of all sin, invite Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. God bless you. Bobby and I pray for all of you. If you hear my, the sound of my voice, we pray for you. In these very last days, it's not the time to, de to deny Jesus in any way, any shape, any form. But it is time to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Pick up your Bible and carry it with you everywhere you go, everywhere possible. Restaurants, shopping, everywhere. Because in these last days, is not the time to, de to deny Jesus in any way. Please, and please say the blessing over, over every meal that you eat. Remember that in these last days, what you say and what you do is more important than you could ever imagine or ever know. Bobby and I pray for every one of you. And we pray for the lost that they come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. With much love and more grace from the, from the love. Amen. I carry my Bible with me everywhere I go. The restaurants eating, it's on my table. I say the blessing over every meal. I go out shopping, it's in my cart with me because I have to use a riding cart because I can't walk very much anymore. But I always carry my Bible and I always say the blessing. God bless you. God keep you and your safe and in His loving arms. Because these days, these days, there's no safer place to be. And Bobby and I pray for each and every one of you.